Casino. Um, I enjoy acting on the side, just like there's something to do. Um, and I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression when I was 18. Um, yeah, when when I um, was originally diagnosed, they wanted to like give me the tablets and everything, and um, I just didn't want that. I was like, nah, I don't want the tablets. Um, so I've sort of had to find my way out of it on my own. They referred me for therapy. Um, I went to two therapy sessions and realised that it just didn't work for me personally. I know it works for other people and that's why I tried it, but it just didn't work. Um, and at that age I was going through my A-levels, so when I was talking to the therapist about like my problems and stuff, she was more focused on the fact that it was down to my A-level pressure. Whereas I knew that it wasn't, because I, I didn't have, I didn't feel that pressure. Um, at the time, um, it was like I was crying for days on end. Like I just couldn't smile. It sounds really bad, but I just couldn't smile at all. Since then, I went to uni and found something that I love to do and. That was my course and it made me a bit happier and over the past sort of three years I've gradually got better through like things that I've done um, like feel it that that sort of feeling of accomplishment and at the moment it's it's kind of deteriorated again because people don't know but just after university if you don't have something lined up, it gets really difficult because you sort of lose all that sense of purpose. Um, and I didn't realise that some, there was actually something called post-university depression, which is a genuine thing that I didn't actually realise existed until last summer when I was literally just sitting on the sofa eating, I put on so much weight um, and I just didn't have any any reason for like to do anything, I have no motivation, nothing um, and even with then looking for jobs I felt like it was like just no job wanted me because I was applying for things I didn't even want and they were just saying no to me, they weren't even giving me an interview. So those feelings sort of came back um, quite strongly and I think I cried for about four days in a row at one point, um, which wasn't good, it wasn't fun. Um, my coping mechanism is because I spend a lot of time on social media and like Instagram and stuff, what I've realised is that if you fill that with positivity and like stuff that is going to motivate you and stuff that actually speaks to you as a person rather than just a general like, oh, here's a nice picture. If you actually follow accounts that are like, positive and motivational and like little daily quotes like if even if you just read one quote a day just one little one it really does help and um, I found that through doing that it has really um, helped me with my confidence and my um, my overall sort of motivation everything like that yeah, I don't really know what else I do, other than if it gets really bad, I just have to cry because you just have to let it out in some way. Um, and crying is probably my best way of doing that.
because I, I don't really like to speak about what is actually going wrong because sometimes I just don't know. Like, I have people say to me, what's wrong? And I just can't answer that question. It's, it's difficult, like, thinking there's something wrong, but I have no idea what's caused it or why I'm feeling like this. Back when I was first diagnosed, I was sort of, I was uh, told to go to therapy straight away. Like they, they can, it was within like the first two weeks. However, my friend recently was diagnosed with depression and she's been taking tablets for it. And she is on a waiting list now for like six months. It's, it's a bit ridiculous, like, so much can happen in six months. She could get better, she could get worse. Like, it's crazy to think how long it takes to, for one therapy session. It takes like 20 minutes for a therapy session. It's, it's not long at all. So I don't understand why it does take so long. I, re I really don't. Because there's enough therapists, there's enough like people studying psychology I, I really don't get why it, why there's a six month waiting list, I really don't. I think mental health awareness is important because we need to speak out and let other people know that it is okay and it, it, is, it is normal to feel these feelings. You're not on your own. We need to unite everyone together and mental illness leaves you feeling really isolated and like you can't talk to anyone about anything but there are so many people that feel the same way and feel these kind of feelings as well so just expanding your community to people that are feeling the same as you is so helpful because you realize that you're actually not alone and you're not on your own with these feelings as well my advice would be to follow the accounts on social media because that really does help because people spend so much time on social media why not make it a positive place all you have to do is just scroll through and see all these pictures of like girls in bikinis and you're like oh that's that's not me that's not me but you have to realize that everybody edits photos and it's all fake so filling it with words rather than images of people is, is quite a good way of that first step in, in helping yourself. I saw a post on there the other day that said if you can't afford therapy or in this country if you can't get therapy, just follow accounts that are basically like self-help accounts that are like, just follow accounts of therapists. You can write in a journal as well. I know that that helps some of my friends. Personally, it doesn't help me, but that's just because I don't like saying my feelings or writing them down, just purely because I don't know what they are. But I know that it does help some people to verbalize and sort of see those words on a page. I also know that some people, if they write down words that, that they're feeling or like that they feel are negative, that they're feeling and they can like rip them up or like burn them or like it's like a cleansing I've heard that people do that I follow a lot of like feminist accounts as well and I find that they often have sort of pick me up phrases on them 